Today on Clubhouse Gas, we're back at John Cole Sporting Goods with friend of the show and resident gearhead, Craig Brooks. Craig, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Today we're talking about shoulder pads. Let's just get right into it. Kid comes home. Dad, look at my new equipment. As a father, you might be a little concerned to make sure that your kid's in the right gear. How do you make sure they've been fitted properly for their shoulder pads? Well, shoulder pads are probably the easiest item to, to fit of all the equipment, um, but they do need to fit properly. Um, basically, the biggest thing you want to check for uh, is that the, that the proper amount of shoulder coverage you have on your child. Um, when you put this on the child, you would want to look and make sure that this primary pad, the pad that actually sits on his shoulder, not this exposed part over here, covers up the exposed bone in your shoulder. Uh, most people, most any child or even adult, you can feel an exposed bone about here in the shoulder. You want this to hang over that child's shoulder about a half an inch. You could play a little bit in, a little bit outside of that, but about a half an inch is safe. Basically, that keeps this pad from coming down and pinching the child's shoulder and causing damage. Okay. The other, once you, get, once you have the proper width, then you want to make sure that their sternum is covered. Uh, the front of this shoulder pad should come down and cover the, the, the base of the breast pl breastplate, which is the sternum. So the, preferably you would have the plastic portion cover the sternum. Uh, you can get away with a little bit of this, this soft foam over it, but I would prefer to see this hang down. Uh, as far as the proper way to fit them, uh, once the child has the shoulder pad on, basically just pull the shoestring tight. Thank you. And then this piece here, uh, there's a few different styles of these, but this keeps you from having to tie it every single time. You can slide this piece up and lock it into the pad. Kids these days are so spoiled, we used to have to tie it. Exactly. Laziness. Tie, well, that means you got to get there an extra 15 minutes early. <laughs> uh, the other part is the actual T-hook. This T-hook comes around, goes into the shoulder pad flat, turns. Basically, you want that tight enough to where it's very difficult for your son or, well, I guess daughter, but pre preferably son, I guess, <laughs> comes in and, and has tr have problems putting that in, into the, to the slot. If it's real easy, it's probably too loose. Right. All right. What about different types of pads for different positions? Are there, are, is, that, is that the case at the young age? Well, definitely. Uh, at the young age, though, more times than not, you want to just get a good standard pad. Uh, there are some skill position pads. There are some quarterback pads on some running back pads. More times than not, at say the 10 and under, 12 and under, just a standard pad is fine. Um, there, you know, there are a few extra ones. Uh, I know Shut makes a couple that are specific to position. Uh, but again, the coverage and just the size of the child, he might as well just go with something standard. All right. What about the accessories? I see all these different kinds of like this thing. What is this thing here? All right. This is actually a rib pad. Um, you'll you'll find that there's a lot of different pads that can attach to the shoulder pads. Um, this rib pad is, would fit around the child basically here, probably a little more than that. <laughs> uh, but it's basically just going to cover the spine as well as the ribs. A lot of times you see people putting these on and they have them too low. They think they're supposed to protect way down here. Right. It's not a waist protector. It is a rib protector. So it does sit kind of high on the child. Uh, these are, oftentimes these will come with straps where you can wear it like a vest. Uh, more times than not, what you would want to do is actually screw it into the shoulder pad. And most shoulder pads come already pre-drilled with holes to screw that in. Okay. You'll find back plates with two strap or with two holes, some with one. Most shoulder pads will all have two, so they can adapt it for any of them. All right. uh, another another item that you may be interested in. A lot of running backs you'll see uh, are going to wear back plates. Uh, basically, we're talking about the same thing as the the rib protector, but without the side attachments. Right. Attaches the same, just covers the spine from any from any rear hits, any back injuries. All right. Uh, what is this weird looking? This looks kind of the same, but I don't think it's the same. Well, that is actually very similar to a back plate. Um, however, it's, this is just goes for the front. This is a sternum plate. Say you have a child uh, that really loves these shoulder pads, uh, but he's slightly barrel chested, or his sternum is just longer than the, most children with his shoulder width. You can actually attach this the same way as you would attach the back plate to the front and it gives you a, a little more protection on the front of the child. Um, the, biggest, the easiest way to spot it is you do still have the grooves for those T-hooks that we spoke of a second ago to where you can attach the T-hooks to the sternum plate as opposed to the shoulder pad. What's the benefit of attaching it there instead of there? 
Well, it's going to hold it down. It's not going to bow up, flop up and flip up and bother you while you're, while you're wearing it. All right, now you called this something different than what I've always called it. I had to wear these when I was playing. We call them spider pads, and you said that's not what they're called. They're actually called shoulder injury pads. Well, I can't, uh, I can't understand why any football player would not call them shoulder injury pads instead of spider pads. Well, it makes a lot more sense to me. <laughs> it does uh, make more sense. Maybe I guess it's a little cooler to say spider pad. Well, we, we, is, is the, we, we, we're shortcut kind of guys. Whatever is the quickest to come out of our mouth, that's what's going to come go. out. There you go. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, this, this pad actually fits over the shoulders, underneath the shoulder pad like this. Uh, then, of course, is going to fold down. Uh, this is just going to, if, if, say, your child has had some kind of shoulder or clavicle injury, uh, this is something that maybe the doctor is going to recommend to them. This is actually an adult one-inch shoulder injury pad. Uh, I would doubt very seriously you're ever going to see a 12-year-old and 11-year-old right. wearing something this large. Uh, but they make these down to half-inch, and they make them in youth sizes. Uh, again, something that I would definitely use after an injury, not something that you need to just over-pad your child right. and just throw stuff on them. Just gives a little bit more shock absorption. Correct. Is that what it is? Correct. All right. Well, a lot of great information here. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below in the comments, and either Craig and I will try to get to them. Craig, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate you joining us. That's going to do it for us today. We look forward to seeing you right back here next time for another great edition of Clubhouse Gas.